Welcome back to EMC World. This is uh, theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we're going to talk Flash. Zahid Hussein is here. He's the Senior Vice President of EMC's Flash division. Zahid, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good to be here. Great to see you again. We first met down at uh, the Financial Analyst Conference, uh, and then I was out in your offices. We did a little deeper dive. Yep. Uh, really impressed with what you guys are doing. John and I were walking the floor last night. We saw your booth. You know, we woke up this morning on the on the door of our our, our uh, hotel room where these you know extreme you know flash branding things. You guys are going for it here. A lot of customers. Uh, tell us what's going on at the show. Tell us how you feel. A lot of exciting stuff happening. Uh, we feel great about the the portfolio that we're bringing to market. Um, it, we're seeing that there's a transformation occurring in the data centers as, as you move from to a flash-based architecture and it's impacting applications, it's impacting operating systems, it's impacting network infra infrastructure, and of course there's a ground up rethinking of storage architectures that's occurring. So it's really about bringing business value, business advantage through performance, but also addressing total cost of ownership. And what we want to help our customers and partners understand is that we're there to work with them to help them transform their data centers. We, uh, we, we asked Pat Gelsinger when he was at EMC at the time, when he was president of the products group a couple, couple of years ago, it's our fourth EMC world, you know, about Fusion IO. And Fusion IO was just about to go public, and he said, you know, oh, we're watching it. The next year <laughs> they went public. Pat, you know, what are you going to do? He said, we are going to be in there, we're going to be, we're going to, we're going to essentially have Flash. So since then you guys have made the big moves. Yep. Um, but really want to ask you is how do you see this really uh, being a catalyst to accelerate the transformation because we've covered Fusion, Violin, all the big players. You guys have been covering you guys like a blanket. Obviously Flash is changing the architecture. So there's a, there's a, there's a conversation around architecture of fidelity. Yep. Okay. And also building out for this modern era for the next 10, 20 years in this inflection point. How do you guys look at that? Obviously it's a mindset change. We just had uh, uh, Vic on, your CIO of EMC, he's talking about a whole nother mindset. He's coming from GE. This, this new mindset's critical. So how does Flash, one, accelerate change? And two, what mindset shifts will it cause that you guys want to accel either accelerate or promote? So let's, let's go back to the first part of your question around the, the mindset shifts and then what, what gets accelerated. But mindset shifts are, are one, the performance you're getting out of Flash isn't just about, hey, here's a faster version of your storage. It's going to change the way in which you're analyzing the data, operating on that data, the number of simulations you're running in parallel, your response time expectations. Everything that you expect is going to change. And it'll change by an order of magnitude. When things change by an order of magnitude in expectations, that starts to change behaviors. And then applications themselves come to expect something different from the infrastructure. And so you'll see applications themselves start to, start to morph with a different expectation of what the response times, what the capabilities are of the infrastructure, of what the storage is. So it's a, it's a very virtuous cycle. You'll see the infrastructure change, applications change, as applications change, it accelerates the changes in the infrastructure. We see that accelerating over the coming few years. And that's, uh, I can't predict exactly how fast it'll happen, but I think that over the, what we should expect is that over the coming few years, you'll see exponential changes in deployment of Flash at various parts of the infrastructure, in the server, in arrays, and that'll have deep implications, profound implications on the rest of the networking infrastructure, the computer infrastructure, and in particular applications in the way that users uh, users analyze their data and, and what the response times and the number of, of yeah. operations they perform. So everyone data. likes to get on the speeds and feeds, and Dave and I have talked about this in theCUBE all the time, and you know, we've moved from ports and speeds and feeds to you know, business conversations. Yep. You know, but you can't help but talk about some of the economics and the performance improvements with Flash. So the, so the question I want to ask you is, obviously um, IOPS and latency are, are kicked around. So that's cool, that's today, but yep. that sets the stage. What other metrics, well first of all, latency or IOPS, which ones do you think is more important? And then two, what other metrics post speeds and feeds do you think about when you look at what Flash is going to be uh, doing and evaluating? What are the key metrics around, beyond IOPS and, and latency? Yeah, I, uh, so between IOPS and latency, uh, we tend to look at latency as the primary driver. 
I think that uh, as you drive your latencies further and further down, you'll get best utilization out of your, your ever better packed multi-core CPUs, and the utilization will continue to increase. So the latency, driving down that latency, allows you to not just use flash as a storage tier, but it also becomes interesting as a memory tier. So we're going to pursue that. Um, IOPS, of course, are interesting, but it's, it's a way of driving more consolidation. IOPS is something you can scale. You can't scale your way to lower latency. So we're going to keep on driving to lower and lower latency, and that has the great side benefit of getting to higher IOPS. Uh, the, um, now, I, I think the, the... And latency points to more of the, kind of what's relevant around mobile apps and kind of what's happening in the real Absolutely. world, right? Absolutely, you know, you're getting this, this not just a, a great amount of human generated data, but you're getting a lot of event data coming in and machine generated data, and you want real time analysis of that data. Um, only solid state storage will give you the ability to go ahead and capture and analyze that data at, at scale. In terms of where the industry is going and, and what is the kind of rate of adoption of these things and, and you know, where are the price points going, I, I we are seeing that the just Moore's Law, as you go from, from what was single level cell flash a few years ago in the enterprise to multi-level cell now, which is a cheaper flash, to really going to consumer level flash in the coming, you know, really now and, and going forward, we should expect that flash pricing will continue to drop, that a large class of workloads will fit very comfortably into all flash environments, and you'll start to see see customers that are really going for many petabytes of flash in their, in their environments. And we're starting to see that now. We're getting interest from large enterprise customers in going to petabytes of flash storage. So you were sort of using this metaphor of a wheel before. I was imagining a flywheel that, yeah. that could spin faster and faster and faster as things progress. So you mentioned economics, yep. um, certainly application performance. Uh, and I wonder if ecosystem is in there. Th I'm thinking about things that, what, th what are the things that can make that flywheel spin faster? One of the things that, that you, you, you clearly get from flash, from solid state storage, is a, uh, is a reduction in power. So the total cost of ownership starts to become interesting. So, so what starts to spin that flywheel is, is not just that it's faster, but your power is reduced, the amount of time that you're spending configuring, tuning your environment comes down, so your operational expenses come way down. You start to see that, that the, entire, the entire total cost of, of ownership of deployment of a flash-based environment starts to become very, very compelling. And so that's not to say that all of your data is going to reside on flash because the amount of data being generated is, is staggering. And there's no way you're going to put all of that data into a flash-based environment, but I think we will start to see that that the cost effectiveness of putting your hot data on flash is going to become extremely compelling. I think it already is, but it'll become yet more so. As you look at the, the full suite of capabilities, what's the best way to utilize your servers? How do you get the most out of them? What is the power, what are the power requirements? And then what are the operational expenses of going ahead and configuring, tuning, doing all the performance monitoring of, of your environment? Flash gives you predictable consistent response times on that. So, we all know that applications are constrained by, by mechanical disks. Your company uh, does, has to do some unnatural things to make mechanical disks run faster, things like short stroking. We'll look back 20 years from now, we'll look at these crazy things we were doing. Um, but nonetheless, EMC makes a lot of money doing mm -hmm. those unnatural acts. Are you under pressure not to cannibalize those existing products? Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, I, I think that, that we are under pressure to, to innovate and, um, and where it makes best sense for our customers to do what's right for the market. We're not under pressure to go protect our, our existing products. We're under pressure to do the right thing for our customers. And uh, when it makes sense to do the right thing for our customers by bringing them flash-based solutions, we will do that and we will continue to innovate in that space. There is, very candidly, there is overlap between some of our products. Uh, but I think that we are, we are much better off having some degree of overlap than having gaps in our product line so that we can bring really full solutions to our customers. And that's really what we're focused on more than anything else is what is the right thing for our customers. Well, UMC kind of has a heritage of, of doing that. You, you, you have a lot of internal you know, competition and, and I think that's, 
that's healthy. Uh, John, what, what's your take on all this? You know, I, I love, I've always loved the flash and the whole solid state uh, innovation because you know the whole thing, Dave, even three years ago when we were covering Fusion, you know, the naysayers were like, oh, it's too expensive, but we were riffing on the whole scale out open source thing saying, hey, you know, one SAN can really explode in value. And so what that enables is a new, a new mindset and, and, a new, and a new business model, quite frankly, in IT. So you know, to me, I think, one, this is going to increase the IT IQ in terms of forcing IT and anyone doing any kind of infrastructure to be smarter about how to build architecture and for future architecture. But Dave, to, to, for me, the parallel is big data. And when we were at Hadoop World four years ago, the first uh, you know, Hadoop Summit and Hadoop World, we talked about big data. And then last year, you made the point about big data creativity. So to me, you know, the quote that we had from, I think it was from someone Horton Works said, the only thing holding us back is our ability to be creative and understand what hasn't been built yet. And to me, what Flash truly is, Dave, is that, that this, uh, what big data has allowed for new things to be, new questions to be answered, and new creativity is ultimately the key. So, so I want to ask, and I think Flash is absolutely on the same track of, oh my God, I couldn't do that before. I'm going to actually replace the memory tier. I'm going to actually increase my memory tier because I'm going to write my software differently. I'm going to build my mobile apps using Node.js, and I'm going to use AWS, and I'm going to roll a private cloud together, and I'm going to blow out the CRM and install something new. I mean, I'm making that up, but yep. you know, that's the kind of the, the, yeah, the, the mindset. So the question is, what do you guys see as the new the new kind of future, I know it's still elusive right now, but I mean, beyond IAPS and latency, assuming that software's going to be written differently yep. with an expanded memory tier, assuming that open source continues to accelerate, right. assuming people want trust in their cloud, as Jeremy Burton would say, what are the new creative opportunities? I mean, you uh, guys got to look at the, the, at the horizon yeah, and say, I, I you think, know. I think there is, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about this and, and doing, doing work on it. There, are, there is a class of applications, a new generation of applications, that increasingly operates off of a memory tier and runs a set of data services at the application level. Um, and what we would expect, and many of those are being driven by open source community, hyperscale environments, and they're starting to move into the enterprise in various ways. What, uh, what we want to make sure of is that from a, a resource management perspective, what is the best way to go ahead and access that, have abstraction models into that, get the lowest latency, be able to scale that, provide levels of protected persistence where it makes sense, and be able to tier that to capacity pools, we provide tremendous value on how we do that. And a lot of our value is going to be in constructing those software layers, and the, the software layers that allow you to, to scale it, protect it, provide the abstractions, and then be able to really connect that to those capacity pools, wherever those capacity pools may be. And they may be capacity pools that are local, or they may be remote cloud-based capacity pools. So I we smile. will innovate tremendously in all of those things. I smile because you know, my, my CS degree was back in the days when you know, the operating systems design systems, and, and we, you know, Paul Moritz announced in 2010 when he was at VMware, the cloud operating system, basically that's what we were saying. Right. So this is what you're talking about, is yeah. looking at the holistic picture and saying, it's now an operating environment with subsystems, software layers. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the, the, the server node is, is you know, I would say that we've kind of evolved past the point where the server node is the, is the key operating system and the data center itself is what you want to look at as the operating system that you're managing. So you've got these very large scale, sometimes shared nothing infrastructures, sometimes shared a lot of things infrastructures, but how do you really resource management across, resource manage across all of those and provide the various tiers of performance and data access at the right abstraction levels? And how does that then move into new APIs, SDKs, scheduling algorithms at various levels, an OS or application level, and that's where we want to participate. Yeah, that's where I we know. want to innovate. And so with that, obviously software, we just talked about the memory kind of tiering, but beyond software-led infrastructure, as we call it, Wikibon, um, what are the software things that need to get done? I mean, obviously, if that, we agree with you 100%, by the way, that data center is the operating environment, and there is a subsystem elements and all that stuff. What, but what needs to get driven? I mean, software is the key. Software-defined storage is the big buzzword here. Obviously, it's not you know, software-defined networking with, with uh, Nasira. What needs to get built? What is the key enabler on the software side? That Flash will really put Flash you know, in the hall of fame of IT. There are, well, that, that, you know, there are a lot of things, so it's hard to pinpoint it to one, but I would say that, that of, the, of the few that I would name right now, 
getting to a model where you can continue to drive lowest latency in a scalable environment is going to become very, very important. Driving to a model where you have good affinities for your workloads and that, that tier of very low latency persistence, that low latency memory tier or storage tier is going to become very, very important. So how do you manage the affinity and how do you manage the scale? And then, in, and then how do you manage reliability across all of that? Flash is still a very difficult medium to work with. <laughs> and it just gets harder as the geometry shrink. It, it, is, it is hard. And we are investing a lot in making sure that, that we understand both the low level characteristics of it as well as deal with the higher level abstraction models of how do you scale it and how do you have applications make best use of it for low latency access, for memory based access as well as through the storage stack. And how we handle that through the storage stack well, we have our, our all flash arrays, Extreme I.O., and then there's a set of things that we're going to do that are going to give you memory tier abstractions as well. But the, the, the innovation on the software, I think, is going to be the affinities, the scalability, and then getting to a, a resource managed abstraction model and a mobility model that makes, makes a lot of sense here. So, so that, that's hard. Just to follow up on that, so you're talking about the memory tier, um, you're talking about uh, doing things like bypassing storage protocols and, and, yeah. and atomic rights and things of that nature, correct? Am I getting that correct. right? Correct, yeah. Okay, and that's through, for example, industry standards like NVM uh, or other standards that you're going to try to put forth or both? Uh, w so we are, working, we are working with the standards on NVMe, but I will say that, that we will do what we need to do to push the technology forward. And um, as much as it's important for us to be to be driving the standards. We know that sometimes driving the standards means coming out first and then getting the standards to be adopted, but really we want them to be standards. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then my other question is, wh where do you guys fit in the whole software-defined storage you know, play? Talk about that a little bit. EMC is, uh, we'll be talking a lot about our software-defined storage strategy uh, at this EMC world and you'll hear a lot more about that and the things that we're doing around both the, the controller side of things as we're able to manage a sort of heterogeneous array types in terms of provisioning and, and, um, and then eventually data services in a common way. The, um, there is a software-defined storage that often means what's happening in a purely software provision model on, off of commercially available off-the-shelf servers and that's also a lot of interest to us and many of the things we're doing on the server side with Flash, we see intersections with the software-defined storage as well as where we go with, uh, with software, with server-based Flash. And the hard part is doing that in a way where you're still taking full advantage of the, of the latency characteristics of Flash. So what you don't want to do is build a software provision model and then lose the, all the advantages of, of your water it down tier, instead, water it yeah. down. And you can do that if you if you don't really have good understanding of what the protocols are, what the networks are, what the affinity models need to be, how to best place your workloads, all those things. And that, that's that's the that's the trick to it. So from a from a stack data management, storage management, volume management stack standpoint, the good thing is you guys are new technology, so yep. it's fresh, it's modern. The bad thing is you haven't been around for ten years developing all those capabilities. <laughs> but then the flip side of that's good news is EMC has a lot of that stuff. So can yeah. you talk about your your storage management, data management stack, um, and, and how that will evolve? The, the storage management stack, you'll, you'll hear about a lot at the CMC world around the things that we're doing to continue to make it easier to provision, make it a, a much more of a self-service model when it makes sense, to drive uh, a simplicity of provisioning across different array types with different characteristics, make that as common as possible in terms of a common set of APIs, uh, you'll also hear more about how we're making it possible to migrate data across the different array types. And we're not constraining ourselves really entirely to just EMC arrays. We're opening that up to even non-EMC arrays. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, uh, the characteristics of flash-based environments make it such that the provisioning and the policy-based models and the capabilities are something that we're going to have to bubble up Make sure that when you're provisioning, you have a good understanding of what the, the capabilities of the flash architectures are and provision according to those. So that's another piece that we're really working on is presenting those capabilities, matching that top down to the policy and making sure that there's automation of capabilities to policy driving that to how data is provisioned and how it's, uh, 
how it's moved around the data center. Hey, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We got a break, but really amazing content. Obviously, it's cutting edge on the front end, and really the explosiveness of you know, this mindset of an operating system where the systems guys are back in, in favor. You know, the big data guys are all about, if you're a database guy, you're hot, big data is good for you. Now, if you're a systems guy, you know, a lot of engineering to be done, um, but the future is very bright, and it's early stages. You guys are laying down the groundwork at EMC for a complete re-architecture. Congratulations, and again, the future is unwritten at this point, and uh, you guys are setting the table, so uh, congratulations. Thank you. Okay, this is Silicon Angles, the Cube uh, flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break um, in, here at EMC World.